This is going to be a fun one. Yeah, I hope so. I hope I don't bore you. No. <laughs> no, it's not possible. You're Danny Goki. I like that. It's not possible. Most interesting man on the earth. That's Danny right. Goki. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Actually, gotta, I think that'd be you. You, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, drop, you. you gotta drop way down. Most interesting. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. It's good to see you. Good to be in your I, home, your home spot. I tell you, it's good to be with a brother in the Lord. And uh, man, I just became a fast, a fast supporter of Danny Goki. Um, your story, you know, my whole family's from Franklin, Tennessee. My family's from South Africa, but I married my in-laws, Franklin, Tennessee. They all live there now, Leapers Fork, Franklin. And before I met you in person, I I knew some of your story, at least what is available publicly, right? Oh, wow. And so uh, I call that the measure of a man, you know, and uh, there's a lot behind that, but just how I look into people's lives and see who is this guy. Hmm. And I've met some amazing people in my life and I've always been interested in just, okay, all right. I pick Evander Holyfield, for instance. I mean, okay, he's a great fighter, wow. managed him for a while. Wow. Great fighter, but who's the guy? Who's the father? Who's the guy that bought 26 houses for family members? Who's the guy wow. that started soul food restaurants because he wanted to revive the community? Like, who's that guy? Who's the guy that didn't know how to read and write until he, later in life? You know, that, wow. those are the stories. So welcome to the bottom line. That's why it's called the bottom line, because we go down a path where mainstream media and people don't go down to. Right. So I would love for people to get to know what you allow them to know about sure. yourself, but a little bit behind. Who's this guy uh, who obviously, God blessed you with an incredible voice? And I say this about artists all the time. It's one thing to have a good voice, but then does that artist play that instrument well? Mm. Just like a guitar player play guitar, right. because the voice is an instrument. And I think, sir, you play that thing really well. I appreciate that. A lot of, lot of work and practice has gone into this instrument. <laughs> and, As um, it should. Yeah. And right? I, I I like to challenge myself. Like this today I was getting up and I was like, you know what? There's a certain part of my voice that is getting weak. I need to figure out how to condition that and get that stronger. Like I think about this stuff, but now it's time to put the exercise in to do it. Is it is it chest? Is it mid chest voice? It's, where where is it? Where are you feeling it? I grew up singing in church, so it was like you push and you yes. sing and you yes. you go. Like I'm you belt. big voice. Yeah, you belt it out. But there's that more reserve side that I haven't developed that uh, I'm wanting to spend time really developing that so I have the full spectrum. Yeah. And it's funny because a lot of my music stays in the belting mode. And you, you'll notice in different songs with different flavors and I'm more softer. And But I, I want to make everything, I want to be able to effortlessly go to each part of my voice, each register, and feel like you heard no breaks in your voice. So that's a, that's That's a technical term a break where yep. it's you you hear the change yep. in the voice like Smooth. So falsetto so falsetto la, you know that's my falsetto then my regular voice la and now when you go la you know there was a little bit of break i saw there like on my way up and you try to make that smooth mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. no break yeah anyways all this technical no so stuff. some no no so something you don't know about me for about 10 years, we developed artists. Uh, we oh, developed wow. 150 artists for The Voice, 250, uh, probably 230 artists for American Idol. Wow. One guy we developed just one, America's Got Talent, Dustin Tavella, an incredible believer, comedian. He's actually a singer. When, when he went on American Idol, I messaged him and said, Dustin, are you going to sing? Incredible artist. He used to have a deal. He goes, no, God's called me to... God called me to magic now. I mean, sleight of hand. And he just yeah. won. He just So, yeah, we developed. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he just won. Amer America's Got Talent, the most recent. And he's got a show. And now he's discipling the strips of in the Vegas Strip. Incredible believer. He's from YWAM, Youth of the Mission. Oh, wow. On Come fire. on. No, no, this kid. I met him in my mother-in-law's kitchen because they were rolling through Tennessee when he was young. He was 19 years old. And he was just praying a firestorm in the kitchen. I was like, who are you? He's like, I'm a singer. I'm Dustin Tavella and his whole team. No, it's amazing. But we are... We've always been involved with developing artists. My sister is an artist. My brother-in-law is a producer in Nashville. Music is so important. You just said something. My brother, who lived in Nashville, went on tour with U2, with the 360 tour. Wow. It, was a, it was a tour manager, built a whole spaceship. And then he, he did some tour work with Celine Dion. Celine is an artist that I've always said, she moves. 
through her scales, through her range, yeah. effortless. God. Yes, yes, Mariah Carey is a great singer, mm-hmm. but it's not Celine. The, nope. the effortlessness was not there. So, no disrespect to anybody, Ariana Grande, any, but Celine had this ability yep. to just move, and you couldn't tell any breaks. It was just, yeah. That, and that's, it's interesting. That's where, you know, you can get by with what you got, or you can challenge yourself to keep growing. And I want to keep challenging myself to grow because I mean, I sing with some, you know, me and a, another artist named Natalie Grant do a Christmas tour every yeah. year. Man, I mean, she reminds me of like Celine Dion. That girl can sing. She, mm-hmm. I mean, every register. Yeah. She's the one that really inspired me to be like, get all your registers together. And I can do it, but I want to get better at it. You I want I mean? you to meet Bill Deaton, my brother-in-law. He produced Natalie, and he's produced many people. But they, <coughs> oh, wow. she, but she worked hard on that. Stories that I've heard. It's work. Uh, people look at Tom Brady and they go, oh, he's great. No, that guy outworks every other quarterback, or yep. used to. Now he's retired. We'll see. Did he retire? He retired. Come but on, we'll, Brady, come back. <laughs> one week after retirement, he said, I think I want to come back. So, well, could be a tactic. I mean, he's what, 43? Yeah, he's going to turn 44. Look, that's... I played, I played pro sport. I mean, it's a long time. It's it's a it's a miracle his arm hasn't fallen off. I know that is like true. Brett Favre. I mean, yeah. he fell yeah. apart. Yeah, because yeah, the body at some point. That's a good thing about music, though. Yeah. Honestly, if you preserve that voice, if you take care of it, that instrument, it's not like football. <coughs> it's not like you're getting smashed in the throat in the middle of your set. Right. You can abuse your voice now. Yes. And so, okay, so that's a great point you brought up, and because I I was thinking about you know Brady. He was smart where he built a team Mm -hmm. that he knew how to pick all the winning elements. And I think a lot of people didn't do that. That's my personal judgment. Don't don't email me. I said what I said. (laughs) No, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. And nobody anybody refutes that still, they they're just living in the ignorance. But look what he did. He built a team. But it's about team. Yeah, it is, right? Mm -hmm. So I started thinking about so it's not just about age, it's also about what you believe, right? Yeah. If you so I was telling this to my my band yesterday, because I'm the guy. I'm 41 years old, about to be 42 in April, and I'm the guy. I want to play basketball every. You don't look it to. though. Well, I appreciate. Just that. hit pause for a second. You don't look it. Well, thank you. What? You, when were you born? Are you sure? 1980. Okay, I'm April. just checking. I'm just making sure. Next year or next month? No, it's a yeah, youth, next month. It's, 42. A, it's a youthful spirit. Well, it, and it has to because I do believe. That and it comes through the eyes. The eyes are the windows to the soul, but it's ah. two way though, brother. It's not just in. It's also out. That's right. Yeah. So I talked to my band yesterday and I said, you know, my dad, who I love my dad, right? Love him. He worked so much. There's six kids in our family, mom, babysat kids. Dad worked the tunnels, systems, worked janitor, just worked. I remember at one point he was working three jobs to make it ends meet. And when he was in his 40s, I was think I was already 15, like my age, 41, 15. Anyways, he was in bed. And I always saw myself like- wow. That's going to be me. Mm. I just, you know, it's interesting when you will absorb yes. a lot of your belief systems through what you see and what you hear without even knowing. It's monkey see, monkey do. Yep. We copy. It's a and great- Human nature. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. And it wasn't until I started un- opening the scriptures when I started seeing, oh, no, no, no. This is, you don't have to believe that. That's right. It's funny because all my band is younger than me, right? Yet I'm the guy, and this is not a contest. I'm not in a, I want to play basketball for hours. I'm the only one that wants to play full court. People don't want to run that much. I just, I look at these guys. I'm like, I don't get why you guys don't want to keep, but I think it has to do with my belief system. I, around 20 years old, I started dealing with my belief system, started going to church with a pastor that started unwrapping these things. But I, I just see myself never stopping. Really. If you ask me today, and this is, people say this all the time, oh, in my mind, I'm young too. No. I, I, I honestly look Fatigue comes in, but mentally and emotionally, I don't get tired. It's like go, it, 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 and, and because I I don't know, it's just part. I it I just see life as I don't see it as okay. We're supposed to at some point start going downhill. I agree. No, can I run? Can I still run as fast as when I was a professional rugby player? No, and I'm not naive to think I can. Right, but I'm I'm gonna go against anybody my age and and say listen if you can keep up join the team but i dare you to try to keep up with the pace and and i think it is so much mind over matter why 
Because Danny Goki, as that, <laughs> as this book, I'm going to grab a book here. As this book teaches us, this is the Bible. As this book teaches us, as a man think. Ooh, so is he. Come on now. So is he. I got the greatest compliment Come last week. So last week we played football with uh -huh. the tour. Yeah. And this 20. Who's on tour with you? Um, I'm with Newsboys and with Mac Powell. He used to be part of Third Day. Yeah. So he's doing a solo project now. So Great voice. Oh, really great voice. Yeah. Actually, Michael Tate too. Like, gosh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. So yeah. this 23-year-old wants to hold me. Mm -hmm. At the end of the game, I'm not thinking anything. He goes, you know what? He goes, because he's fast too. He's super fast. Mm. And he said, he goes, look at me. And I, we finished the game. I'm done. I'm walking on. He goes, is this flag or tackle? What this is, is flag, yeah. Okay. I went out for tackle. <laughs> I can't. Well, I'm, no. I, the, I'm just seeing tackle and the label is calling that phone yeah. red hot going, um, excuse yeah, me. You need to stop, sir. That's what they would say. <laughs> you need to stop, sir. <laughs> they, he looks at me and he goes, you're really fast. He said, I've never had anyone hold me the entire time. And it just caught me off guard. Like, of course, at 41, I hate to say that I felt good. But I was like, oh, I felt good, right? Of course, but I wasn't thinking that. when I'm playing football. You're just playing. I'm playing, and you ain't about to get a touchdown. And on you're me. not, and you're not asking yourself, oh gosh, man, I'm going up against a 23 yeah. year old. I'm 42. It's like you're not scoring. Yeah, he's just not scoring, and I'm you're scoring. not scoring. And it was surprising that he said that. So Joseph Prince, you know, is a pastor. I like. He has a teaching called. Do you know I went all the way to Singapore? Did you just? To go sit and meet that dude Get and be in his church and so his lucky. youth group. No, I mean, it was epic. Look, Singapore is an experience by itself. I mean, that city is wild. If you really look at it, 85% humidity. It rains every single day. Technologically advanced. But it, no, anyway. Yeah, I went there. It was an experience. It was, it, huh? It, yeah, it How was many years ago was this? 2016. Oh, so recently. Yeah. This is when he built the big... Yes, huge. In the middle of downtown Singapore, massive arena. It's like a football stadium. Pretty but awesome. it's indoors, right? No, it's epic. Yeah. So he has a teaching. You probably heard of this one. It's like restoring your youth. And yep. and he gives the secrets of what Caleb did and Moses did. And and he uses those. And his whole point was it's it, what you look at matters. What you see matters, right? And I've always taken that to heart. You know, because Caleb said, I'm just as strong as I was when I first when you first gave us the promised land. He was 80 years old. Moses, his eyes didn't grow dim. Now, I could tell you, now, am I tempted at times to question, oh, man, should I be running? Is my heart okay? Like, these things come up. But and that's human nature, right? But is, you yeah. have to defy human nature, Danny Goki. You come do. On. <laughs> when human nature knocks, you say, get behind me, Satan. Whether that is to go to sin mm. or whether that is to see your own shortcoming. That's good. Because Satan comes to steal, kill, destroy. So he's the one that comes and says, Danny, should you? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I should. And then what if you get hurt, Yaku? Then I pray for the healer to come and well, heal me. <laughs> I pull all the guys together. We played basketball yesterday. And I was like, we're going to pray. And one of my other guys, <laughs> he's 35. My guitar player goes, man, I just want to say thank you. He said, we need prayer at this age. I said, we do. Like, I really depend on prayer at this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Um, because thank God I have no heart issues, no Achilles issues. Because I'm starting to see. We play basketball with this one pastor. Like I'm the I'm notorious for wanting to go to churches and play ball. Not because I'm good, but because do the I pastors love play fair? This pastor was talking trash before we got up there in okay. a Christian way. He okay. wasn't being belligerent. The very first play, he's my age. He played college. The okay. very first play. So he's play, a basketball player. Oh, yeah. He's a basketball yeah, He rounded he, up his team from the church. I rounded up my boys from my- From my, the band. From the band. The very first play, someone- so Or maybe this- Yeah, the very first run, someone passes the ball and he stops and he goes, uh-oh. Everyone stops from like, what? Uh-oh. Oh, no. We're like, what's going on? He's just sitting there holding the ball. He goes, I tore my Achilles. And we're in disbelief. But yeah, he ended up going to the doctor. I kept up with him. And, but it was just. That's a bad injury. It is. And a lot of people. No, that's a very bad get injury. Get that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I. Because it's a lack of elasticity. But there's the issue. Hmm. Um, and and not important. But my, my, no, I my, hear this. my education background, I studied orthopedics. And, and both my knees are reconstructed for rugby. Sure. Left hip is reconstructed. So. The Achilles tendon tendons have no blood supply. So if you if you rupture a tendon, and a lot of Achilles, you could have a tear, but a lot of them is like a, a rupture. There's no blood supply. And because there's no blood supply, the healing is it's a beast. I mean, so what's the way to prevent that? He probably he look, the body does this. Where the body breaks, that's not the problem. Right? So wherever you feel pain, that's great. We can treat your pain, but the problem is right. not there. Any orthopod would go, okay, so you tore your Achilles. 
was the problem in one of the hamstrings. It's not, is in the, is it in the calf muscle, is in hip alignment. The Achilles gave out because it was the weakest link. Because big muscles will win, right? And so, so it's, <laughs> that's a good point. It's, it's up the stream somewhere. So if something's wrong in the lower back, your glutes a big muscle, your hamstrings a big muscle. Okay, so maybe you tear a calf muscle, or if you tear a hamstring, it's in the glute or it's in the back. So you always go find the culprit is somewhere else yeah. in the body. It's somewhere else. But that's very indicative of, of a walk with Jesus. The day something breaks, the day betrayal happens in a marriage, the day someone gives into pornography, the day sex trafficking happens, which we fight every single day, the day a pastor falls, right? Yeah. That's not the problem. The problem is four, two, three, four, five years ago. Wow. Right? It shows up today. It shows up in, okay, the guy walks out on his wife, but... We got to go way back. Man, that's so good. Yeah. But the human body listens to the same creator, right? So the body's going to do the same things. What I tell people when we have these crazy conversations today about gender and all this stuff, I say, show me that in nature. Come with me to Africa where I'm from and come show me a lion that's confused whether he's a lion or not. <laughs> yeah. Show me one. Show me a crocodile that doesn't know he's a crocodile. I, I, because yeah. the same creator created them. God is not, there's not a God for the animals and a God for nature and a God for you. and a, No, there's one all-powerful, almighty God, a trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, by design. Father who holds the world in his hand and nothing can move without his say-so. Holy Spirit, so we have a guide. We literally have a coach. That's great. That's and a so son great. that said, you can't, so I'll step in for you. Dang. I'll go pay the price. So he's not different. So, okay, yeah, so the body does the same. So when that pastor's Achilles went, it's not the Achilles. Somewhere else in the body, something's written. And over time, over time, to, to a point where the Achilles just said, I've carried enough weight, I can't anymore. Yeah. I'm done. Now, probably in his, in his life, it's elasticity at that age, but it's upstream. That's the same with sin. We, which is why we have to stop doing triage in the church. We must help people who are in pornography. Of course, of course, we got to do that. But if we only do that, Danny, we're literally just stopping bleeding in the ER. Meanwhile, the guy needs a heart transplant, needs a kidney transplant, needs surgery. But yeah. we're doing, you know, we're, we're doing triage, right? That's so good. Hey, isn't that a picture of what our world is? We treat uh, symptoms symptoms, and not roots. Yep. I was reading the scripture this morning and it was a challenge. You know, sometimes you wake up and you're like, I just don't feel like reading. I feel like being on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. But I had to remind myself. Thanks for being real. Yeah. Oh, no, dude, this is like a. This is, no, let's be real. I mean, that's we have we are in this world. Like I journaled out of pure just journaling, right? It wasn't out of. I have like my little routine. Yeah. That it's journal, read a book, read the Bible. Okay. Take little pieces of it, right? Okay. But journal about what today, what is, what am I focusing on today? Okay. Right. Like, so drifting was one of my pages a few days ago. Drifting, you know. You can, the Bible talks about drifting away from, it's in Hebrews. I forgot the context. I wrote it down. I think it's Hebrews 2 verse 1. Um, anyways, I, I should look that up. But in Hebrews 2 verse 1, talk about drifting away. Can you, can you pull up Hebrews 2? Oh, let me, you it, keep, keep going. I'm okay. listening to you. I'm going to pull so it up. I got it. Becca. It talks it. about drifting away and making sure. So how does drifting happen? You base, And I just wrote, well, what is my version of drifting? Drifting is taking okay. the oar. Yeah. If I was in a boat, it would throw it. And then let the very undecided, I wish I had a picture of my journal, I'd read it. Because uh, I, I actually wrote it really cool. And I was like, man, this is what drifting is. You just, you let you let the waves of life take you and it's and it goes chaotically into so a different So you direction. lose the rudder. You give up the rudder where you just, you just let it take you wherever it wants to take you. Yeah. And yeah. so in the Bible saying that we must be intentional about where we are going. And did you find it? Is it Hebrews yeah, 2, yeah. 4, 1? No, no, it? brother, you're spot on. Come on, come on now. <laughs> come on now, Danny. Go. What, can you read it real quick? Hebrews 2, verse 1. This is New King James. Okay, I, I read New King James. There's a new living over there. But New King James, therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape? if we neglect so great a salvation. So it's basically, if you don't pay attention, if you don't keep your hands on the oar, if you don't stay as steady with the rudder of the ship, 
you will drift. You will drift away. And you probably end up on an island where you're going to get cannibalized. But you think about that drift happens in family. So I wrote yeah. down areas of my life where worst possible drift. Marriage. Yeah. Kids. Career. So I'm in a part of my career where I have a choice right now. Do I want it? Like with my voice. Am I about to take it to the next level? Or am I going to drift on my talent in years of experience, right? Because yeah, I know after years of experience, I can get up on a stage and I know how to work. You have the secrets of working the crowd. Work the crowd and the mic. And the mic and you can and make. And drop a key. Yeah. And, 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 you know, yeah, come on. There's so much you can do come to on. wow a crowd, but that's drifting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And with my marriage, with my children, I, I think I heard someone say something like, if you don't work on this relationship, I forgot, now I'm going to butcher this quote, but it was so interesting. Like, if you don't work at this point now, you're going to be on your deathbed and your kids are not going to want to be by you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's drifting right there, right? Absolutely. So I was thinking about what point right now am I working, being intentional, giving all the heed, you know, since I know what God wants me to do to make sure I'm not drifting in my career, in my marriage in my walk with the Lord, because we, one thing we know how to do is have a form of godliness, right? This world is all about, I, I was reading a book, this, uh, one of the things that led me to this, well, I was reading the seven highly effective, what is that book? Seven Habits of Highly Effective yeah, yeah, People. Yeah, yeah, yes. I read this intro to this book. I haven't read the book, but I, I don't know who wrote this at the intro of the book. They have several copies of it out in different editions, but he was talking about just he was going in on putting the work at this point in your life, yeah. putting the work in. But he said two things. He said right now, up till from the beginning of, of America to 1926 was was the character ethic, right? Okay. What mattered? It mattered integrity. What mattered? Uh, you think of every fruit that you can think of with character that mattered. 1926 after World War One to now is the it's the personality ethic. How can I look the part? Mm. How can I walk into a room, say the dazzling words, and then get everyone like riled up and then walk out and have an unethical life, right? How can I be the one that walks into a room with my ego, just stomps on people around and get things moving? He was like, no matter how much personality you have in every area of your life, you can never, you can never get away from sowing and reaping. You can't cram a That's carrot right. into the ground and reap a carrot. That's right. No, your personality will always get to this point. And then to this point, there's gonna be dysfunction, there's gonna be chaos, there's gonna be, there's gonna be striving, there's gonna be fighting within, there's gonna be, but he said the character ethic, it's like the seed in the ground. It takes time, it takes sowing, it takes sunlight, but you always reap. A harvest. Uh, absolutely. Dude, it was unbelievable. And I'm like, man, our whole world is based off of personality. Instagram, uh, movies, right? Everything that we Instant do Instant gratification. Yeah. Which is so shallow. So shallow. There's no depth. It doesn't take relationship. No. Scroll, scroll, like, 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 like. <laughs> that, that doesn't take relationship. There's no commitment. I stood on a stage one day and... Um, I said, pull out your phones. And it was a, it was a, at a convention, entertainment convention. It was like, I think it was three or 4,000 people in the room. And I said, pull out your phones. And they all pull out their phones. And I said, raise your hand if you had more than 100 likes today. Because that was kind of the benchmark back then. You get 100 likes. It's like, whoa, 100 likes, right? And they raised their hands. And I said, okay, when you leave this speech right now and you drive and your mom has a flat tire, who of those 100 people will come show up? Oh, no, that's ridiculous. And I said, but we call them friends. Mm. They're not friends. They're not even acquaintances. They just, they just pass her throughs. They just scroll through your life. And, and so a guy in, in Franklin, who I want you to meet, Dave Buring, Pastor Dave Buring, Lion Share Ministries. He's a pastor's pastor, Grace right. Chapel, okay? But, oh, he's, yeah. but he's a pastor's pastor. Dave is a dear brother. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up a coffee for you and him at Pockets of Merities or something, okay? okay? Seriously. I'm in. I'm in. This is a guy. I mean, Mandisa, all of some of the top artists, he's mentored. He's an incredible, incredible human being. You need to meet Dave Beering. Dave sat me down in Meredith's. And if you haven't been to Franklin, Tennessee, go to Meredith's and pocket support them. But we're sitting in Meredith's, and you know Meredith's. And he goes, and he draws this dartboard, like these circles, right? It's just circles. No color, just a black Sharpie and draws these circles. And I teach this now. And he said, hey, here's a dartboard. I'll wait. I'm going to go eat coffee. The bullseye. The bullseye is your heart. The bullseye is, is, is the most important people in your life. So put their names in there. 
And then just go as many people as you can remember. And I'm like, dang, I, there's 8,000 people in this phone. I'm like, I can go a long time. Yeah. He goes, just keep filling out. But the further you go out in a circle, are, are they're least important to you, but the important people in you. So I put names down, I put names down, I put names down, right? And he goes, okay, understand that the people in this inner circle, you, this is a rite of passage exercise. You've granted them access to disrupt your day, to upset you, to completely control what you say and think. You've given them your ear. You've given them your heart. Are you sure that the people that's in the circle need to have that access to your life? What you think and say about God, how you operate, how you deal with things. And he walked away again. And I came. He came back and I go, no, there's a lot of people in this circle that should not have that kind yeah. of power over me. And sometimes it's close relationships, right? And this is not a love issue. This is about we grant access to people to alter the course of our lives. I, you say drift, okay, I agree, but they become the current mm, that moves good. that boat in the wrong direction. So I started reshaping my life and moving people. And I felt, I felt bad at first. I'm like, am I going to move John out here to circle number three? <laughs> you know? And it's like, yeah, because John is really an acquaintance. I love him unconditionally. But John is not. There's not. And so you start reshaping life. And you think by default, well, my mother, brother, sisters, they all got to be inside. No, not necessarily. Right. Then he said, where's, where's God, Jacob? After this whole exercise, he goes, where's God? I go, it's easy. Come on, Dave. I mean, I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. Come on, Dave. Dead center. He goes, that's your problem. I go, wait, time out. I respect you. You lead Iron Man. You're a man of God. God is in the middle of the bullseye. He goes, is that where God is? I go, yeah, God is in the middle of the bullseye. And he goes, okay. How about this? God should be center in every ring. Ooh. Because now when you deal with John here in ring seven, God is over here. And that's what happens to the church. People believe God's center of my life. Is he center of every conversation? Is he center of every decision? Is he in the frontal lobe constantly, permanently? That's permanent prayer. Is there permanent conversation with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus? Is there permanent counsel going on? Are you in the middle of a set, song five, and you know you bounce the set around because you're not feeling it. The drummer's not in the pocket. Whatever happens, you guys jump around. Is he in? Is it permanent? That's what I'm striving for because now we get to Jesus ministering to people and there's a knock on the door and they go, his disciples go, Rabbi, your mom is here. And he goes, who's my mom? Who's my mom and my brothers? They go, wait a minute, it's Mary. Mary. Catholics worship Mary. It's Mary. Right. He goes, no, I'm about my father's business here. I'm healing people. That's good. I like that. That's a great illustration for that. Because so, he had the ring and he placed, he put God into that ring. I was really Mary good. Was not, Mary was not in the bullseye. That drove it home for me right there. Mary was not in the bull. In that moment, she did not have the access or the ability to pull him out of that house and deter him from the job he had at hand. That's a, that's a spiritual skill that I want to, I mean, I, only Jesus can master it, but I want to get really close to saying, in this moment, am I drifting? You brought it up. No. Am I drifting in this moment? And how not? I must be about my father's business in this moment when I'm with my son, Different than when my daughters. So this morning, our two-year-old, you got kiddos. Mm -hmm. Potty trained the whole deal. He goes, Dad, I, I won't say what he said, but he, you know, he, needs to, <laughs> he needs to go number two, right? <laughs> so I take him, right? We go over. He sits down, and I just heard the Lord say, because I'll stand and wait for him. He's got his own little toilet, right? Yep. It's like this mini, mini me toilet. That's kind of cool. I'm right? very yeah. familiar with that. Okay. <laughs> and he's sitting there, right? And I'm standing. I'm six foot three, and I'm standing here. Right? And God says, why don't you sit next to him? So I, the, the look on my son's face, two years old, because I take him to the party, I mean, a hundred times a week, right? I sat down next to him. Now I'm almost at eye level. It was, I, I almost teared up and no words were spoken. I was like, dear God, if I take the effort to go to his level, and it's not about coming to his level, but it's the effort of saying, be intentional in this moment, yeah. and, and not even about speaking words. 
He looked over at me, Danny, and he just stared at me. Almost like, almost like he said, what took you so long? You're always up there. You know? That's where I want to invite him in. Go sit with him. Bring him into the conversation. That's, I, I, I'm pursuing that, man. I want to be intentional about are we about his business in the moment because we're going to discover gold. I love that you said that. What a powerful... Because when we're focused on personality and looking the part and not allowing God to develop the character in us, we're missing out on that moment. That's the thing that I think strikes me the most. So this morning I was reading about the parable because that's been circulating in my mind because you nailed it right there. If there's a break, like you said, in the marriage, right? You're seeing the break happen but we're not seeing the four or five years ago, exactly. right? Of where the break started. But if you look at the sower, God's word always, always has a hundredfold return, right? I believe that. But it's dependent on the soil of our heart. Like in that moment, your heart had the ability to take a seed and you bore fruit in that moment. Or you miss it. Or you miss it. But you could have been distracted in that moment. I and I have been many times. And me it's too. Because, and it's because I have been. And it's because often I want to look the part to my child. I want, you know, yeah. we're so focused on a model Christ, model Christ. Yes, model Christ. What does that look like? This morning, it looked like sitting down on the floor, not saying a word. It's profound. And, and there's no doubt, there's no doubt that it impacted that child this morning. He didn't have to say a word. The look he gave me. And then we sat there, and he was probably done a minute in. We sat for five minutes. My daughter walked in and go, Dad, what are you doing? And I said, I'm just sitting with Torrin. It, it's, it, it, was, it rocked me this morning. It taught me a lot about being a dad this morning. Seriously. And it's okay. not about necessarily what we say. It is about being present. But I think what I'm experiencing is about us becoming more and more in tune like a radio dial, cleaning up the, yeah. get the static out. Yeah. Get the delay out, get the verb out, just yeah. get cleaner, cleaner signal, right? To talk music, to hear when he says, hey, sit down. It was, it was, it probably did more to me than it even did to my son. It was epic. But you know, it takes years, what I'm learning, it takes people who get to that point, there were other points they had to get to to get to that point. Right, because yeah, Jesus no, said, after he said that parable, he said, they'll hear, but they won't hear. Mm -hmm. They'll see, but they won't see. Matthew. Mm -hmm. They'll perceive, but they won't understand. It's literally right after the parable, he said, because their hearts have grown dull. I, to become intentional like that, I even believe there were steps before that. Yeah, for to sure. To become intentional Absolutely. like that. Yeah, there no. was a tuning in already. Oh, yeah. And this is why every moment counts and I have to remind myself, this is to me why it's so important to get up and to really put, I was with Joyce Meyer this past week and we did the music for her little small event that she had. Uh, they took out some people and we did music. And I just love the practicality. She said, I roll out of bed and she said, I just say, she goes, I even get on my knees. She goes, no, I'm, she's kind of making a joke. I'm older. She's speaking to a hundred people in this small little room. Very intimate. At a hotel, very intimate. And she said, I just said, God, I need you. And God, I love you. Mm. I'm nothing without you. Like that intentionality, you know, she's like, I can't spend too much time on my knees because she has a routine. She says she gets at 4.30 in the morning, sits in her chair, but sometimes she said, I'll just roll on my knees to remind myself like that prostrate as long as I can, like I am nothing without you. It starts there, right? It starts there with- Start with surrender emptying ourselves. Jeremy Camp has a song called, I think, Empty Me that I just love. You know, burn away everything inside, you know, that is not of you, you know? I just love that idea. But it's so easy, right, to do. I just don't want to get, and I've already been at this point time and time again in my life where I'm, you know, <laughs> Joyce Meyer nailed it because she said she was really busy in ministry at the time. This is before she started on ministry. And she said, she said, um, the Lord just kind of said, you know, you're working for the ministry, but you spend no time with me. You know, like that's looking the part. Wow. But how many of us do that? Wow. Like, and for me, like being a Christian artist, it is like I, people think that we just are like floating in heaven half the time and they don't realize right. like 
Like you're dealing is, with life. You're also a dad. You're also yeah. a man. You're also a human being. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we also have the ability to play the part. This mm -hmm. is something on an internal, personal level that has to be dealt with every day. And the prayer has to come down to like, God, if you need to take it all away, take it all away. Because the most important thing is you. It is the most important thing. And I won't even notice the drift. See, what people don't know is drifting, you don't notice. You don't. It's a slow fade. You don't. You have no idea until God opens your eyes or you finally start paying attention. And all of a sudden, you're like... We need where the emergency room. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the emergency room. I need a motor on this thing because <laughs> right? I was supposed to be by my family yeah. in Franklin, Tennessee, and I floated off to New Zealand. Yeah. And I had no idea. And now, how do I make up this time? How do I make up this loss? I regret. I regret. You know, you can see all these things. Drifting is. Drifting is. I know drifting. for a fact. This. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this interview. I just knew it. And thank you for being here. Your schedule is so crazy, brother. I know. You're on the road. What time this morning did you roll into Dallas? I don't know. I, I slept a little rough last night. The bus hit some rough roads. So I feel like we rolled in maybe around 7 a.m. Arrived at yeah. 7 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. And you're sitting here now. Thank you, brother. Because uh, th that's the life of the musician, but you roll through the night. Dan, I, I, I said this when I thought 5 a.m., right? It might have been 5 a.m. I don't know. No, but, I, but thank you. Okay, I I understand. Oh, dude, my pleasure. I, I understand, but I but Danny, I'm telling you, people are going to hear this and they're going to go, e "I'm drifting." So let's talk a little bit about because once we tell them that, I'm going to get into the music too. But sure, when you realize that you are drifting, and and how how do you work your way back? Well, I think the parable of the sower. So I, I studied that again today. I don't know how I got on that one. I listened to some a series of messages by Andrew Womack talking about. I've been in that scripture. I've been in Matthew uh, two through sixteen for Have about you? for about a month. Get out of here! No, so for about a that's month. That's pretty good to stay there a whole month. Yeah, yeah. It's just I can't get out of it. Wow. He well, just, thirteen. He, he just he just arrested me in Matthew. I'm I'm arrested in Matthew about just Jesus being about his father's business, he, whether it's the parable of the sower or. Yeah. Or you know, or marriage, or immorality, or whatever. It's I, just. I do think, when you ask that question, I think this is when he starts talking about the sower, because remember, his seed, his word, never returns void. Yeah, can't. And all of us are soil, correct? We're sure. all soil. Yeah. Right. So he said, anyone who hears the word of the king. Okay, parable of the sower. Explain. Let me go up a little bit. Uh, right here. Um, sorry. This, all right. All right. So here he explains it. You then listen to the parable of the sower when anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it. So these are ways to keep from drifting. This is, I believe, the answer or maybe part of the answer. The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown, right? Because the word of God will always produce big results. A seed always produces apple seed and tons of more apple trees, right? Um, and the one... That was sown on rocky ground. That is one who hears the word immediately, receives it with joy. Oh, I'm drifting. Okay, yeah, I got to fix this. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And yet has no root in himself, but is short-lived. When the pressure, so there's pressure that's going to come, persecution because of the word. And immediately he stumbles, right? So he stumbles in keeping the word. Now, the one that is sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but now the worries of this age, ooh, and the seduction right? Of wealth. The, the noise, the noise. Choke the word becomes unfruitful. But the one that is sown on good ground is the one who hears, understands the word and does bear fruit, yields some 100, some 60 and 30 times what was sold, so, um, sown. I truly think, and then Jesus, he, up before he goes, you will listen, never understand. You will look, never perceive for the people's hearts have gone callous. He's saying their ears are hard of hearing. They've shut their eyes. Otherwise, they might see. They might hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and listen. When you do that, you turn back, and I would heal them. So there's a healing process that needs to happen. But I guess what I'm saying is like Jesus laid out, listen, if you're not seeing fruit in your life, it might be the condition of your heart, which is Proverbs 4, is it 23? Guard your heart. Yes. Because your whole life is contingent upon the soil of your heart. And if you're allowing other things to bear fruit, you know, because remember, everything we meditate on is a seed. The enemy comes to sow seed as well. 100%. Whatever, I say this, whatever you feed in your life will grow. Just watch out if you're growing a dragon <laughs> because you're going to have to fight it and it grows multiple heads. 
Yeah. This is wow. when people deal Dang. with, you know, alcoholism and then and and then it's like, man, he's fighting so many demons, so many de Wow. You be careful whatever you feed will grow That's because good. God created you, me, every single living being with potential to grow good fruit. The potential is there to grow good fruit. But if you feed something negative, it's going to grow. It, yep. it, the, the law of the world is it will grow. And then one morning you wake up and go, now I got to now I got to fight a dragon. Yeah. Now Dude, and that's key right there. Yeah. You don't want to grow the dragon, right? No. Well, he talks about, right after that parable, he talks about uh, the kingdom of heaven is compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while they were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed weeds. We got to remember, God is sowing seed, but guess who else is sowing? Yep. The enemy is sowing Absolutely. seed. And the condition of our heart depends on what's going to bear fruit, mm -hmm. right? I think the thorny ground is exactly what the enemy needs, right? But the soft ground is what God needs. And so guarding our hearts. And how do we guard our hearts? If you look at that, this is another thing I kind of did a study on because this is key. Guarding your hearts is watching what goes into your eye gate, what goes into your ear gate, and who you hang around. Mm -hmm. Those are the, from what I remember of reading Proverbs. But because ultimately, those things condition your heart and what the heart's filled with, the tongue will speak. Mm. So one way for me how people can find out if they're drifting is what are you saying? What are they saying? Look at your Whoa. speech. And I even go to people like, and I say often when I do, I, I, we did a master class. And in the master class, I talk about people that, you hear this all the time. That's just my luck. I always get the bad parking. It will grow. Yep, it will. That will grow. And People, go, people think this is a joke. It's not a joke. And they laugh at this stuff. This is serious. You know, it's a study. Um, I don't know, Becca, can you try to pull this up? It's called the study on water. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, words in water. Yep. If you look at this, just pull it up because there's pictures. There's actual is it pictures. Masuru Emoto. The it's doctor? Masuru Emoto. I think it is. Yeah. Dude, I read these books. I oh my gosh, my wife. My wife is so about personality and these kind of things. But this is this is. Look, remember, God wrote a code for the universe, and it can't be rewritten. No. So when you study of water, you can put Japanese scientist. Yeah. When yeah. you pull up Japanese scientist, it'll go. Yeah. Just say study water, Japanese scientist. Try that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, she's gonna get it. She's gonna get it. <laughs> They hate it when I do this to them. There we go. Yeah, Masaru, Masaru Emoto. Emoto. Now see if you can do pictures. Click on Masaru Emoto and then click pictures. Okay, here we go. All right. What's on screen right now? Uh, just take your cursor over the on the bottom there where it's a beautiful blue crystal and then black. Like, okay, on the right, okay. Eternal peace. They speak words over water. Yep. Uh, those multi ones, Becca? You know, yeah, just click on, yeah, click on that. Let's see there. Okay. This is literally, just stop there for a second. This is literally how water created by God, this, this water created by God responds to words being spoken over water. It's yep. fast when it crystallizes and when, and when it's ice. Thank you. Wisdom, truth, eternal. This is real. Yeah. And look at you make me sick. Look at that. That looks evil. It looks like a James Bond you well, know, open looks up. Looks like someone punched it. Look at the word evil spoken over water. Look at the word. It's like evil. someone punched the water molecule. The same guy said the word Hitler. Yeah, I saw that. Over and it turned black. <laughs> the water turned black. This is no joke. This is speaking words over water. And water has life, by the way. And water, you know, even the rocks will cry out. But just look at this. So now when we talk to somebody, he goes, That's just my luck. My wife. My wife doesn't appreciate me. Let's say she doesn't. Let's say in that moment she doesn't. Don't say it. Yeah. Because you're going to grow that dragon. Yeah. Speak life and life abundantly. It's fascinating. I'm, I'm with we... you. I, this, this was really instrumental. And I think about a lot of, we're going back to the health thing. A lot of people, yeah. oh, I'm getting old. Yep. Oh, you know, just doesn't work like it used to. I never say, that's a cuss word. Yeah. It's, you don't say those words. It's a curse. You don't say I'm ugly, it's even a, if you feel it. It's how many people do that because they want to make fun of themselves in light of others. And I think it's some sort of humility. That's false humility. False humility. It's pride, actually. It, it is pride. It's yeah. cloaked in, it's cloaked in because what's at the bottom of it? Self. Yep. Self. Oh, I'm just not good enough. Oh, I'm, now, you know what? It takes a lot of humility. <laughs> I was telling my wife this. I swear I said this to my wife. I said, Leah said, it because my wife is Hispanic, and if you know, like Latinos, Latinos, fire baby, they are, and they it's passion. I've been, my it's, I love wife, that culture. Oh, so do I. But it's let me tell you, 
<laughs> you know how every culture has like some of its vices Absolutely. are like you know the things that grew in the culture yeah hispanics because i was married to and i'm not speaking for all hispanics the ones i know i should just say i was married to my first wife she passed away she's in heaven but my second wife now she's latina all hispanics that i've met like to talk about the problem oh i'm, I'm tired oh just my, my ankle hurts oh i'm think i'm getting sick and my wife was doing it right sorry if i'm generalizing i don't mean that <laughs> But my wife said, I said, you know what? It takes humility to say what God says over yourself when you feel a completely different way. I said, that's humility. And I wasn't trying to rebuke her, but I literally had this revelation of, if the Bible says by his stripes I'm healed, it takes humility when my body is screaming in pain right now to have to humble myself and be like, no, you heal me, or I'm just gonna speak these facts right now, You're right? But it takes humility to say, you know what? No matter what I feel, I believe your word over yes. what my body says right yes. now. Yes. And that is humility. And we don't think yes. it is. We think it's, oh, you're just that name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. No, you know what? We just believe like Abraham, the father of faith. If we walk by faith and not by sight, that he had to, if he had to persevere 25 years for God's word to come to pass, well, maybe sometimes it's not a microwave event. And sometimes you get to say for a few years, you know what? I'm the heal of the Lord while you're battling cancer, while you're taking medications, Amen. while you're in chemo. Amen. Or whatever. I'm speak life. And you know I'm what I'm speak saying? And I'm going to focus on the positive. And this is literally, I'm going to speak it into existence. What yeah. do you think? A, a conversation I will have. I will. And I and brother, I want to be in the inner courts. I got no desire to just make it into heaven. Hmm. That's not a goal. I want to be in the inner courts. Oh, I want to get close, that's right? Good. But I'm going to I'm going to track down Noah. I'm going <laughs> to find that boy and go, dude, 80 years, build a boat. That was 120, wasn't it? 120, but 80, yeah, 120, but for 80 years there, there was intense work. First is planning and then it's physical oh, labor, gotcha. right? Okay. But okay, 120 years, it had never rained before in history. What? It's not just the boat. That's crazy man's building a boat. What do you need a boat for? There's going to be so much water. But not just that, water's going to come from the sky. Water didn't come from the sky. It had ne it came from yep. the ground, Yep. right? So he was a madman to the world. He was insane, right? I mean, no. this is a long time. Jesus himself, it's not time, Mary. No, 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 come on. Turn this water to wine now. We're going to get embarrassed, but it's not time. And I really think he probably thought back and go, you woman, you will not sway me again. I'm about my father's <laughs> work right now. <laughs> You're not going to change me again. Now, look, how does all this culminate in Danny Goki's life when you write songs? Talk to me about your process of songwriting. What comes first for you? Is it the melody? Is it the hook? It's the is idea. It chord progression is the idea. It's the idea. What do I want to talk about? Okay. Like my song Stand in Faith right now. Incredible song. Is Becca, can you pull that up? Screen on Stand I in Faith. I will stand in faith, walk by faith, live by faith. I believe, I believe. I will uh stand in faith, see by faith, receive by faith. I mean, these are things, these are things that these are exercises that were we need to be reminded of. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. P if people are listening around, they don't even realize, most people don't realize that right now there's a fight for their faith. No matter how good life is going, there's a fight going on. And um, and how do we know this? Jesus said to Peter, he said, you know, the enemies have to ask to sift you like wheat, but I prayed. Jesus could have prayed anything in this moment. He could have said, but I blocked it. I told the father, make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah. He said, but I prayed your faith doesn't fail. That's so interesting to me, meaning that in free will, when everyone gets a chance to have free will, like God is telling you to choose life, but he can't choose for you, right? Yes. People want to ask these questions of why, if God was so good, why do bad things happen? Because someone made a choice and that choice reverberated and hurt a lot of people, you know? Um, but Peter said, Jesus said, I prayed that when you, you know, I prayed your faith wouldn't fail. And Peter came back and restored the brethren. There's levels of faith. We look in the scripture when Absolutely. Jesus was on the boat. It's like you said, the inner court or the outer court. It's like, this is, the guys are in a boat. Jesus said, where is your faith? Meaning the disciples in that moment had zero faith. Yes. And then. Well, he, Peter had faith for a minute. And yeah. then he started questioning his own ability. Yep. He started looking at the ways of the world, the ways of how the body works, yep. of what his physical body is telling him. And he goes, and then he sank. The Lord save me. And he goes, come on, dude. And then he said, did you moment, not just walk on water, bro? And he said, did he say to him in that moment, he said, you little faith, why did you doubt? Mm -hmm. So Peter had a little faith in that moment, right? So that little faith got him there. And then all of a sudden he started doubting it. it Mustard started, seed. Then you have the lady who Jesus said, I didn't come. She says, heal my daughter. I didn't come for you. And she said, yeah, but even dogs get the crumbs, the crumbs off the master's table. And he said, 
I have not seen such faith like this in all of Israel. So she had big faith. So if there's levels of faith, we ought to pay attention, right? Absolutely. And we we ought to stop living like we want just enough faith to make it in. Man, that's so good. Dude, I like, dude I'm not interested like that. to be at the make it in crowd. I'm not the guy that goes, hey, teacher, what what's pass? 52%. Okay. Got you. I got 53. Let's go. I got 53. Yeah, let's know. go. Come on, Jesus. Let's go. Man, what a good point. I, I love what Kenneth Copeland but, said. But, but she goes, hey, those in the 90s, you get a feast. You get a meal. Mm-hmm. You go on a field trip. Hey, hey, you're going to meet the president. Fair there. Hey, a little, more, a little more than that. You're going to walk in the inner court. I want Christians to start moving towards understanding that there are levels of faith. Oh. There, are, uh, there are assignments in heaven. Yeah. I want to walk in the inner court. That's, people don't know that. So I, no, they don't know. They don't know that. Well, like, if you're faithful to live down here, you'd be given much in heaven. There's Absolutely. going to be rulers over 30, over, yeah. I forgot how Jesus said yeah. it. We're not establishing, you're not building a house here, we're building a house in a, in a, in a place, in a position. it doesn't mean he loves one more than the other, but there are roles and assignments, right? Well, dude, I do not want to be looking over, you know, looking through the fence. I know. No, no, come on, no. Look, there's scripture that will, will rock you to the core when he's talking about the believers that will not make it in. Mm. But Lord, we, we cast demons out in your name. Depart from me. I don't know you. Yeah. That's, that's hardcore. That's yeah. hardcore scripture, man. That should make us stop and halt and go, okay, pause. Stop. Take stock right now. Not tomorrow. Right now. Am I drifting? Again, Goki, you started this conversation about <laughs> drifting. I love it. No, but this is yeah. it. This is the hour. Okay, back to the music. You yeah. write that song, okay? Many artists I have met in my years that their favorite personal song is necessarily not necessarily the song the album takes as a single yeah. to radio, right? Has that ever happened to you? I'm not asking you to blow cover yeah. here on anybody, but where the song has a personal, there's a song on the album that has a personal meaning to you, but it's not necessarily the hit or the one that goes, one of the top three singles that goes to radio. Has that happened? Yeah, I've I've had a couple of songs. I hate to say it, there's a couple of songs because when I write, the process is, Lord, I want to say what you're saying so I can make a greater impact, right? Because I can sit there, we can be creative, right, in our own strength, but when you start singing prophetically, yeah. Right, you see in what heaven is saying. Like one of my favorite artists back in the day, his name William McDowell, the worship guy. He said the Lord told him, "If you say what I say, I'll make a way for my word." It's great. And he started writing songs. He had a song that was really big called "I Give Myself Away," which was so you can use me. You know, wow. you know, I give myself away, and that song just blew up. But there's there's a song that I have called "Wanted" mm-hmm. that I wrote. Um, one of the writers was with his prayer group, and he. And during this prayer time, they're praying about different things, but the Lord takes it back to a very harm, very painful memory that he forgot about in his past. And he starts freaking out and he he opens his eyes, he's talking to the prayer partner. He's like, bro, I know we're praying about this, but the Lord is taking me back to this dark place. I don't know what to do with this. I I was hurt. And the, his prayer partner said, go back. If God's taking you there, go back and ask him where he was in that moment. He closed his eyes. And he said, Lord, where were you when I needed you most, when my innocence was taken away, when everything was robbed from me? And he said he saw, when he asked that question, he saw Jesus come from the corner of the room holding um, holding a heart. It was his heart. And the Lord gave him back his heart. It was just that picture that he saw. Like all that years of brokenness, the Lord gave him back a healed heart touched by him. And so we wrote a song called Wanted for people who have dealt with rejection, people who have, you know, one of the words, like the I, the, the beginning verses, I was there the moment that it happened, but you didn't see me through the pain. I caught every tear that was falling when you lost your heart that day. And it goes on, now you only see through broken lenses, you know? And, and, and so, but it goes to say like, but if you saw it through my eyes, you know that you are wanted. You know that you are wanted. You're not rejected. You're not abandoned. You're not forgotten. You're wanted. So that was one. It went to radio. It didn't do well in radio, but then it's streaming wise, it just excelled. So it, um, yeah, that's one song I can go into. But a lot of the songs that I write have and, stories. And those are, and those are the songs. Those are my kind of songs. Yeah. Typically, historically, whatever I've done in music and where we've worked, the song that's a quick hit and it goes. That's normally not the songs that that really moved me. It's the yeah. song that I got to live with, right? Yeah. 
like I want it because I think it's so layered. That song is so yeah. deep. It's so layered that it takes people a minute or a week or a month to process and identify with the song. And and when you really, when you preach a sermon or anything, we see this all the time. When we go into church and we preach on pornography, those are heavy sermons, man. It takes those men some time to go, that's me. Yeah. And they got to process, that's me. And they got to battle that because they don't want it to be them. They don't want to accept it. They want to play see no evil, hear no evil. But once it finally hits them, they break and then real healing comes. And those songs do that. Songs are so important. You know, th there's a reason. Look, the artists went in front. Let's go charge Jericho. It's the artist. And the songwriters of our time, yeah. of any time, is so important. If only you say, God, what do you want me to say? Yeah. You know, a friend of mine bought a, um, a mold, a Michelangelo mold. So this is mold. In the bottom of the Vatican, they keep these molds where they have the naked David, the bust of Mary, the whole deal, where they make molds. They make, you know, these things. So it's a brass mold. He bought these molds. A mold shows up. In the mold is an original diary from Michelangelo that the Vatican, they lost 400 years ago. Somewhere went into the casket. They found it. He found it in Texas. Wow. Could have kept it. He calls the Vatican and goes, hey, I found this. They go, what do you want? What's the, <laughs> what's the number? We just need that back. And he goes, no, I'm going to send it back to you. I want nothing for it. He's a, he's a solid believer. All I ask is that I take a picture. Can I take a picture of it? Right? On the second page, in his own writing, it writes, I'm inspired by the almighty creator to create. Wow. I argue all art, art is an expression of God's heart. It yeah. has always been about an expression of God's heart. It's all the way, always been the artist that is in touch with the creative side. For God's sake, God, what do you want me to paint? What do you want me to say? Because in that moment, when you wrote that song, Wanted, even if it was for one person, yeah, then it's worth it. Oh, it didn't do so well on radio. Don't care. Did, we can argue, did it touch one person? Oh, yeah, it did. Then it's worth it because he'll leave 99 for one. So I love that. Before we go, Danny, yeah. I know you got to go. I just want to tell people, Restore Coffee. This coffee company, we partner with Restore Coffee. We'll throw it up on the screen. Proceeds from this company goes towards rescuing children from sex trafficking and helping to restore lives, building safe houses. It's incredible coffee sourced from around the world, Kona, Kenya, um, all over. It's phenomenal coffee. Look at restorecoffeecompany.com. And why don't you help save a life by drinking a cup of coffee? Uh, you're doing it already. So please stand with us in that fight. And thank you for all your support. Danny, before we go. What's on the horizon? Are you writing a new album? You're touring at the moment. So yeah, people touring can at the go, moment. People can go to dannygoki.com. Yeah. They can go tonight if they're in Texas and, or, or, or just follow. Just go to Danny's. These guys track. They're like nomads. They go all over the place. <laughs> I love it. When do, you, when do you make it back to the family? Do you get a break? Yeah, I actually get home Monday morning and then I have an event on Tuesday and then I'm back for several days, which okay. I'm excited about. All right. I miss my kids, man. Yeah. I love spending time with them. Well, we speak favor over you. Thank Pray you. blessing over you. Uh, you're a tip of the spear. Pray that God gives you supernatural downloads of songs. Amen. Songs that penetrates the toughest subjects in culture. Hmm. I've written those. My, I've gotten pushed back, but maybe I'll release them one day because I'm pretty outspoken. <laughs> Lord, give me a grace. You have a love for this country too. Dude, I do. This is, this is a three-hour show we need to do with you, but I got to let you go because you haven't slept and you're playing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't have those newsboys guys out seeing yeah, you no. tonight. Come Welcome on. to tour life. No vocal breaks tonight, bro. No. No, no, no. no. Tonight, no. tonight, I'm asking you, you sing newsboys, right, under the table. Ah, mission. mission. And, and you tell them that I said it. <laughs> Because dang it, competitive nature is good. It brings it out is. the best in Bring, us. It sure does. This is capitalism, baby. Come on. Thank you, Yaku. I love you. You too, okay? bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thanks, guys. See you next time.